I'm really excited today to be with Pastor Perry and his son Japheth and they have an, a story to tell about what the Lord has been leading them to experience in their own Christian life through their own personal studies and what God has been revealing to not only them but to myself and people all around the world and so I would like to introduce uh, Pastor Perry and his son Japheth from Honduras they're with us now and we're able to uh, enter into this discussion talking about some of what they're going through. And uh, if you don't mind, Pastor Perry, maybe you can give us just a one minute summation of who you are, what you've been doing, and, and what you're planning to do. Well, I'm actually a, uh, a fifth generation Seventh-day Adventist. It was my uh, grand aunt, Elizabeth Gatoru, that brought the Seventh-day Adventist message to the Bay Island. I worked as a pastor for over 35 years in uh, corporate Adventism, and um, I have, have been president for two terms, and I have also, um, I've, I, went, I studied at Andrews University. First, I was in Belize, high school, uh, college in uh, Jamaica. And I did my master's in uh, Andrews, my doctorate also. And then I came back here, worked on the Bay Islands as a pastor, president of the conference, departmental for education, secretary of the conference. And, and, uh, and then I started studying. Uh, you know, I always had this doubt about uh, this Trinity. And so I started studying and I started preaching. And they, they simply did not accept that. Okay. And so what, uh, the, the reality of what's going on in your life is something that also happened in my life and many other thousands of people around the world. So now, uh, next to you is your son, Japheth. Maybe, Japheth, you can give us a little bit about your story and, and how the Lord has led you um, into this interview and, and what perhaps is going on in your future as well. I have just finished my, my studies in the Philippines last year okay. of theology, right? Bachelor's in theology. And I came to, to work in the island last year, the middle of the year, 2019. And I, I worked for half of the year um, as a teacher. And then the, big, the first day of this, year then i'm mean, not the first day of this year but the first day of work this year then i was laid off from my work because of preaching the truth right teaching the truth to the children yeah and yeah so now i'm just working as a bible worker um among the brethren who believe right where are you working as a bible worker here on the island of, of honduras yeah rotan Rotan, okay. So now let me ask you a question here, Japheth. You said that you were um, teaching the children about truth. Now, I heard from your brother who mentioned that you had said or tried to read a chapter to the children and there was a response. Give us a little bit of that story, if you don't mind. Well, what I did when I, when I knew I was, was going to be working in the school as a teacher, I started to plan what I would teach the children. And there are, there are about six, six different um, year levels okay. or grades that I would be teaching. So I decided to, what I would do is I would use um, Ellen White's History of Redemption series mm -hmm. to be my my textbooks, you know, for me to, to study. And I would teach out of that, but I would teach from the Bible, you know. And so that's what I was using. And I decided for every year level, I would use one of these books. Okay. And so I would, if if I worked, let's say six years or, or five year five years actually, then the children would have would would have gone through the entire Bible because they would study the, the whole history of redemption, right? Yeah. And so that was the plan. And so I was looking through Patriots and Prophets, Prophets and Kings, 
the Desire of Ages, Acts of the Apostles, and the Great Controversy. Now, with, the, the, with Patriarchs and Prophets, it begins with how evil originated, right? How it all started. Yes. And, and then it, it um, continues then with the creation, with the fall of man. And all of these chapters really explain how it all began, you know? How there's God, there's his son, and Lucifer was envious and jealous of Jesus, who was equal with his father, mm -hmm. right? And, and also received worship as his father receives. And so as I started to uh, um, present to the children how sin originated, we had to go through this story, mm -hmm. right? And so when I would teach them and I, and I show them, and this is an Adventist school, yeah. right? An Ad Adventist high school. And I read from this. That school, that's in Honduras, right? Is that where you were teaching? Okay. Yeah, right here on the okay. in Rotan. That is Honduras, yeah. And um, I started to teach, teach them um, this. And also some of the other grades wanted to to know why sin originated as well. Mm -hmm. And so I took these different classes or grades that wanted to know why sin originated. I took them back to Patriarchs and Prophets and I reviewed that story. I think it was about three, three different um, classes or three different grades that I taught this topic to. And as I go, went through it with them, those students that were Catholic, they would try to um, oppose me, let's say, right? And I would show them the truth, and they would see that I was clean from the Bible. It can't, you can't go against it, right? Because it's mm -hmm. from the Bible. But the Adventist children who were taught in the Trinity, they were, they were not so convinced, right? Wow. They just didn't like that topic, and... They kept asking, but that's not what we were teach. They kept saying, this is not what we were teach. This is not what our, yeah, taught. It's not what we were taught. It's not what our Bible teacher before had taught us. Mm -hmm. And so I had problems with them. And I tried to show them from the Bible and I show them verses, but they just couldn't accept it. They just kept saying that it was not what they were taught. And so I, I went through with them, but I was called in to the conference and I was told not to teach this. Wow. Did they know you were teaching the first chapter of Patriarchs and Prophets and they told you not to teach that? Yes, sir. Okay. They knew and I shared also with the president of, president of the conference, but still it was, they just told me do not teach it, right? Mm. And, but I explained to them, to not teach it was, would be then to just not teach verses from the Bible that are very important and to not teach what Ellen White was divinely instructed to give to us. Yeah. And so I told them I could not keep silent on this topic. It was something that the children needed to know why sin originated, why Satan was jealous of Jesus. But, um, but I was told not to teach it. And so the year passed by and in vacation, I went abroad, I got married to my wife, and when I came back, first day of work, I was called into the conference, and they told, then they fired me. That's, that was it. It was done. <laughs> the first day of work, you were fired. Wow. Because of what had happened the year before, right? You were teaching what the Bible says and what the Patriarchs and Prophets says in chapter one. That's outstanding. <clears throat> Congratulations, by the way, on your wedding. That's wonderful. I, I hope it will be a, a great blessing to you and many others. So, <clears throat> Brother Perry, I'm wondering if you would give me just a, a moment of your time as well. Help me to understand, help us to understand what you were doing in light of working for more than 35 years in the conference as a pastor, as the secretary of the conference, doing various things in many ways. What led you to this point right now? What, what, tell us about yourself. Well, uh, 
for many years, I was, uh, I have been asking questions. 20 years ago, I went into the conference uh, and spoke to the president of the conference, who is the secretary of the union at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I asked him a question. I says, could you explain to me uh, the Godhead? And he just says, no, it's a triangle. And you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And uh, without one of them, you don't have God. And we couldn't, he could not explain what I was expecting of him. So I left it at that. And I continued to study. About three years ago, I was in the Central Church in Roatan, French Harbor. And they were discussing uh, about uh, the Trinity. And the teacher got up and he was talking about one plus one plus one equal, uh, plus one equal one. And, um, you know, and bringing all of this thing in. So I got up and I said, could I have a word? Hmm. And then I spoke about uh, John 3.16. I said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And when I realized the members of the church could not accept that Jesus was begotten. You know, they were always, they were turning it around and saying, no, but he's unbegotten. And I says, man, this church has problem. So um, the, the mayor of Roatan, his wife asked me to dedicate their children for them, okay. their grandchildren. So I was invited to French Harbor Church to do a dedication uh, not long ago, just the first part of this year. And, uh, and I went and I did the dedication. And when uh, I was present, the pastor of the church came and asked me if I would preach. And I told him, sure. So I got up and I spoke about God. Yeah. I, I showed them from Deuteronomy, from Isaiah, from uh, Mark and uh, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. And, and I went on and showed them that there is one God. Amen. And Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. And I made them read the verses. I say, <laughs> you read the verse because you may think I have a different Bible. <laughs> so I, they read it and I asked them, what does it say? And they will tell me, and I said, that's exactly what it's saying. And I preached. And when I left there, all of the members said, will you please come back and preach to us? Will you be our pastor? We need to hear these sermons. And, and it went well with the church. Amen. The pastor kept the message off. He went to the conference, and all hell broke loose. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, start, they called me in to the conference, and they asked me, they told me, don't preach that message. Mm. You know, please stop preaching about God, that one God. And, and he read a text and he said, you know, we should be united. And let's be united in the Trinity. Oh. I told them, the Bible doesn't have nothing concerning the Trinity. And Amen. you will have to prove me wrong. And, um, and so they called me in about four or five times, and I have tried to show them. And in fact, I have made them read the verses of Scripture, and then I will ask them, what does that say? And they will tell me what it says. And then they will tell me, but you are interpreting it different. I says, how? I says, I'm <laughs> exactly what it's saying. And uh, it was just, they will just constantly tell me, do not preach about that topic. Let's go out and form small groups and let's go and baptize, but don't preach that topic. That was constantly, every time, because they could not defend themselves. Wow. And then they brought in a professor from Montemorelos University. They brought him to my home and to speak about right where I'm sitting now, right here we were sitting down, and uh, he, he came in and talked to the three administrators and the president of the, uh, the secretary of the union and the professor from Montemorelos University came in and they started talking about the Trinity. And I, I had told my wife, I says, you know something? 
Trinitarians does not believe that Jesus Christ is the literal begotten divine son of God. Right. And she says, no, I can't believe that. You, you're mistaken. And I said, and so I left her like that. When the professor came in, I asked the professor, I says, tell me something. Who is Jesus to you? He said, Jesus is God. I says, no, he is the son of God. He says, no, he is not the son of God. If he was begotten, he will have had to be the son of God in heaven. And he was not the son of God in heaven. And, um, and my wife looked at me. I said, you see what I told you? I said, you see what? I said, how could we believe this nonsense? It doesn't make sense, you know? Yeah. And it been from one thing to the next, one thing to the next. But neither have the union come down and spoken to me. Neither one of them have heard me preach a sermon. Never. Or teach a lesson. Never have they listened to me. Not even the president, secretary, or, or um, treasurer of the mission, of the conference. None of them have heard me preach. But yet they have condemned me. You know, I had a similar experience as what you're just saying right now. When I was uh, brought up in front of the conference, I suppose it was 2017, they had brought me to a situation where I was asked to be at a board meeting, a local church board meeting. And they wanted me to speak, but I didn't want to speak because nobody had told me why I was even brought to the table, right? Why was I even on the agenda? Nobody told me. Nobody said anything. They just said, you have been invited to be censured, and you have the opportunity to speak on behalf of, they didn't even say that, they just said, you have the opportunity to speak. And so I chose not to. Well, there was three of my brothers that spoke, and then two weeks later, there was another meeting, and they gave us the opportunity to take a vote. Well, we ended up taking a vote, and the majority of the group at our local uh, church, they voted us not to be censured. There was the five of us. Well, four actually, because one had resigned his membership. And uh, see, the thing is, we were chosen not to be censured by the local church. But what happened in our situation is that the, the uh, conference leadership, the president, and I believe it was the secretary and a retired man that was with them. Maybe it was the person in regard to education. I'm not sure exactly. But anyways, they decided they were going to take our church to the executive committee of the conference so that they could take the church status away from our local congregation and make it a church company. And the reason being is, once that church is a company, they don't have any local authority. The church board is gone. The church board now is the executive committee for the conference. And so when the executive committee took away the church status from this building or from this company, then now they could make the decisions and they suggested that we be censured. And then of course we got letters in the mail saying that you're censured. But I had the same experience as you did Whereas uh, they went through all of this situation where they had never made a phone call to me. They never asked me for any Bible references. They never, to my knowledge, heard a sermon. They've never been in the pulpit or I mean in the congregation while I'm preaching. And so it was really, it seemed very unfair that they would come so aggressively against something that they didn't even study for themselves. So that was your experience. I mean, what, what more can you say about that, right? Yeah, um, it, it has been uh, the difficult part of it that, you know, the teachers you promote, pastors you employ, and people that lived in your home have become your bitterest enemies Yes. over the truth, you know. And I told them, I says, I cannot unite in error. I will rather be divided in truth. Amen. So I will, and um, and they, well, they have done everything. But you know what has been difficult for them to? They have never called me to a board. I I begged them to take me to the board. Mm -hmm. I told them I would love to sit down with all the pastors and let me present my my views or or about the, my my uh, the truth of God's yeah. word. Mm -hmm. But they have never taken me to the board. They have never um, sat down with the pastors and heard what I had to say. 
you know. And, but for them to come to this decision, first of all, they had to destroy my character. It's nothing that they have not said and done. They have literally destroyed my character. You know? Now, and, let, me, let me ask you a question. You, to my understanding, have also lost your job, right? I mean, are you, any, any, are you employed any longer? No, no, I'm not employed any longer. They, they, uh, they gave me, they called me in and they gave me a letter of uh, stating why I'm will be uh, taken from the church, and they gave me my 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 final settlement. But you know, an interesting thing. Listen to this. They had a lawyer who is uh, from the Church of God. Oh wow! Representing <laughs> the they had a lawyer there to, to do the final settlement and do the legal work for them. So when they called me, it was the three administrators that was inside of the, um, the conference room. Mm -hmm. And I walked in, when I got in there, I saw a, 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 the lawyer, I know him quite well. He's a well-known lawyer in the island. And in fact, he is the pastor of the Church of God. And so we sat down, we talked, and I asked him a few questions concerning my, the amount of money that was given me, you know, to make sure it was all right. And, uh, and after that, I said, that, that's all right. Uh, bring me the check. Let me get what I came for and let me leave. And <laughs> when I was leaving, the lawyer came to me and he, he pushed himself through the door with me. He said, can I have a word with you? I said, sure. He said, could we step outside in front of the conference? So we went outside in front of the conference. And you know what he told me? He says, I believe I have read everything you have posted on uh, Facebook. I have read everything, he says, and I believe everything you have said. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the lawyer. Yeah. He says, I told my son, he said, he said, I told my son, she take this letter. I mean, take this information. This is the truth. Look at it. This is, this is God's truth. He says, I, and he, he did like this. He said, I have no question about who God is and who Jesus is. He said, that is quite clear now. Great. He said, my only question. I want to know more about the Holy Spirit. I says, I have two more presentations to make about Jesus and God, and then I will be presenting about the Holy Spirit. He says, no, I want to come to your home and study with you. Praise so the Lord. So we made our to come to my home and study. The lawyer that defended the conference don't believe what they believe. That's amazing. And, you know, it's, it's incredible to know. I, I've, I've run into people like what you're talking about, uh, not lawyers specifically defending my case, but... I have been on the plane, I have been in buses, I have been on a train, I've been with people in my car. Just the other day, I picked up a guy that was walking on the side of the road. I've been in the lines at the, whether at the grocery store or just random places. And, and I'm very bold about telling what I believe because it's such a hot topic and it's gonna to be important at the end of time, especially in regard to the seal of God and the mark of the beast. And so I share this truth like it's the one that needs to be understood. And people accept it. They accept it as, wow, that's, that really is what the Bible teaches. Except for the greatest group that I've had trouble with has been the Seventh-day Adventist people. Because they have Ellen White that uses third person, right? That third person that's concept is taken out of context. It is not understood correctly. But they're using it as though she believed in a third God. But she didn't. And that's why, Brother Jacobs, you were finding a situation there where you were trying to present to the children something that you were explaining to them about uh, how God and his son were the only ones that were in the councils of God Almighty, and God the Father had a rainbow surrounding both of them, as you read in Revelation chapter 4. And so what happens is you've got this scenario you're trying to paint out to these kids, and they're saying, no, 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 but there's three, right? Was that the problem that you were having? The biggest problem is that people think we're just here in the world and we can be Christians and we go to heaven or we are not Christians and then we are lost. And so even Christians can live, let's say, a worldly life and they think that they are saved. Yeah. Right? And I was trying to show them what the whole problem is because they don't even understand what sin is, where did it come from. 
you know, and I'm, I was trying to show them what is the background of the great controversy, you know. There is a reason why Satan was cast out of heaven, right? There's a reason why he's rebelling against God. There's yeah. a reason why we should not be on his side, right? And there's also specific, two specific persons whom we must adore and worship, mm-hmm. right? God himself and his son, Jesus Christ, yes. who, he has, who he has begotten, right? And so this is something I wanted the, the children to understand because when we understand what the, the context that we are in, the war that we are in, then we understand that this thing, this is real, you know, sin is real. Yes. And we need to be on God's side. We need to know who we are worshiping, right? Yes. And we need to know that we, are, we only have access to the Father through Jesus Christ his son. We only see the father through his son, Jesus Christ, right? One day, you know, the Bible tells us we will see God, but until then, it is only through Christ. Hallelujah. Okay, good. Amen. God bless you in your work. I'm glad that you were able to share. I'm sure those seeds have been planted, and one of these days, they're going to read that chapter for themselves and realize, like, wow, that guy was right. Now, so, is there something else that you want to tell about your personal experience or perhaps you can share what it is your plans are for the future? Like both of you have lost your job recently. Like how recent was it for you, Japheth? That was January, January 16th or 17th. 2020, right? This year? No, that was January. That was January, yes, 2020. And also, my father said that the sermon that he preached was this year. It wasn't this year. It was last year. That was last oh, year. Okay. Yeah, around the middle of the year. A little past the middle of the year. Yes. Okay. And uh, okay. my father's recently. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The 18th right. of last Yeah, so I just, I heard you say this, and I remember speaking with your other son. The 18th of August this month, where we're in right now, is when you worked last. Is that correct, um, Brother Perry? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that, that's right. And uh, but you know, I consider it an honor yes, and sir. a privilege to stand for God, Amen. because if you don't stand, and if I don't stand, then who will Christ have on earth to stand for the truth? And, you know, there are many people, you know, I have spoken to teachers and to our pastors. And you know what they tell me? That the subject of God is not important for their salvation. And I say, but what about John 17, 3? And this is life eternal, that we know God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. It is absolutely important that we know who God and Christ is. And... Um, but I had a call just last night from a teacher and um, the teacher told me, she says, I am warned not to read your information, but she says every day, my son and myself, we read your information and we have you, we esteem you highly for the information that you are sharing. You know, but, you know, I see how God is working. I have people call me from St. Vincent. I had a letter from St. Vincent. I had I preached in St. Vincent, and uh, we talked, and she says, Pastor, I know who you are. I read your information every morning, Amen. she says, and I thank the Lord. And from I had a guy from uh, 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 Pakistan. Yeah. He called me. He says, look here. I, he says, so I understand that Jesus is not God. He is the son of God. And I said, that's exactly so. He is the son of God. He said, amen, hallelujah. Yes. He says, I am a Pentecostal, but I accept that teaching. <laughs> amen. And we're, we're able to yeah. reach out with this truth in a way that is so fresh and so new because the entire world is wandering after the beast and his image. You see, the beast is trying to personate God the Father with his image being the Son. And so we have the beast in his image, and we have the Father in his image, which is Jesus Christ. And so the beast in his image is doing everything he can around the world to try to deceive people. But we are called by God to draw people into the truth as it is in his Son, Jesus Christ, so that people are prepared to receive the mark of 
the seal of God rather than the mark of the beast, right? Yeah, you know, in the future or what we are really planning. Well, I need to retire, but um, I'm working more now. I'm studying more now than I ever did. Amen. So God doesn't, doesn't put any of us on retirement. But anyhow, our plans are, I have three of my sons that are ministers. Yes. One is in Austria, and I have two that are here. And there is no work for them in our organization. Though they need pastors right now as we speak mm -hmm. on the islands, they speak both English and Spanish, but they have no, no room for them. But our plans are for the future that we do a ministry, you know, something probably like you are doing, Nader Mansour are doing, yeah. and uh, he's purchasing and trying to get the equipment and eventually share the truth in this part of the world by going on, on in, through the media as yeah. you are doing and so forth, you know. Because right now the media is very useful. People are able to see this kind of thing around the world. We're not going to have this media very long. I believe the enemy is going to do everything he can to try to squelch what we're trying to do with all the censuring and all the, you know, taking down of websites and blocking people and, you know, mistreating them or demonizing them, as you said they did to you. But what I believe is happening is God is opening the door right now for us to be able to share while it is day, because we know that the night comes where no man can work. And so I'm really excited, Pastor Perry and dear brother teacher, professor, if you will, Japheth, we're very thankful that you guys are here, that you've been able to share what it is that God has led you through. And we want to be able to encourage you. We want to be able to pray with and for you. And if there's anything we can do to, to help you, please let us know. Now, do, you, do either of you have a website or a, a contact information that you could lead us to that we could be able to perhaps follow you, see what you're doing? Do you have a website, uh, rather YouTube page or Facebook? Give us some information. Well, like my dad said, we're, we're, starting to, we're trying to start a ministry. Um, I'm start, trying to get a, a YouTube channel started, but we haven't put any content up yet. We have... Um, on Facebook, a Facebook page, which is um, the word and the testimonies, the word and the testimonies. And you can go on my Facebook, you'll see I share the post. And um, my Facebook is Jaffet Elwin. And there you will find the, the post that I'm, I'm placing. What, are, what we are Posting and also my father has already started um, posting before me. What we're doing, we are translating, um, you know, the, the website Trinity Truth. Yes. It has a lot of very nice um, information and, and good information for sharing on Facebook. And what we're doing, we're, we're um, translating it to Spanish and I'm also translating it to Portuguese mm -hmm. and we're posting it. Yes. Praise the Lord. And so, we're starting with that now, and then what we will do, we'll make videos and, and more content. Good. Praise God. Well, that's wonderful. I encourage you both to continue doing what you're doing, and we're going to be praying for you. We're going to be asking the Lord to continue to lead and guide both of you and your sons as well, Brother Perry, uh, knowing that they have the knowledge that God has given them, but they don't have a place to work right now because, of course, truth is is not important right now to some of course the seventh day adventist church in regard to who god is that truth is not important the false understanding of god the trinity is very important to them right now they're spreading that gospel the false gospel around the world as fast as they can and in fact in doing so they are foremost in reaching across the gulf to clasp the hands of spiritualism right and the other hand of course is holding on to rome because we know that uh, spiritualism with the Trinity and Rome are all connected in the Seventh-day Adventist churches right there in that mix. And so uh, we're going to be praying for the Adventist church as well, trying to do what we can to help people to understand that what they have learned officially since 1980 is false. It is not true about who God is. But we're going to encourage you guys to go forward and do what it is that the Lord has called you to do. And we want to keep up with you. So Perhaps people can contact me to get a hold of you guys if they can't find out uh, more information, but I'm going to look up Japheth Elwin on Facebook and also uh, the Word and the Testimonies. Is that right? The Word and the Testimonies? Okay, so 
we're going to do what we can to continue to share. But if, do you guys have any closing words for us? Let me just say that there are many Seventh-day Adventists in our churches here in Rotan that believe the truth. Yes. And the president just went to one of my churches and spoke with the leaders of the church, and they told him straight, you can send a pastor to this church, but he will not preach on the Trinity. Amen. And they said, we will take a strong stand. We will not permit him to preach on the Trinity. So that we got strong members that's willing to stand for the truth. So God's word is spreading, you know, worldwide. My son, my youngest son just came from the Philippines. We were able to bring him from the Philippines at a high cost. And he told me, Daddy, in, in, the, in the classroom at the university, they are just speaking about the Trinity. Everything is about the Trinity. Mm -hmm. Around here, every program, every preaching service is about the Trinity. And the devil is working, but God is working mightily also. Amen, amen, amen. And I know that's true. What, it, what is happening around the world is the enemy realizes he's losing ground. So he's using the church pulpits to try to continue to keep asleep those that should be studying for themselves and coming to a better understanding that God the Father has an only begotten Son. His name is Jesus Christ. So do you guys have anything more to say? Any closing thoughts before we go? Well, I just want to encourage our other pastors, members of our church, to remain strong. Anyone that will live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. Amen. We cannot expect to live pure lives, teach the truth, and do not wear a crown of thorns. Um, we have experienced it in my family. They have attacked my family. But we have nothing to dread. We have nothing to fear for the future, except we forget the way God has led us and his teachings in the past. Mm -hmm. So we have nothing to fear. God is great, and he, is, he has blessed us tremendously. I am just happy to stand for the Lord, and I beg everyone that stands for the truth, let's remain steadfast. God will give us our reward very soon, is my prayers. Amen. Praise God. Thank you guys very much. I really appreciate it. Would you please, either of you, would you be willing to have a prayer for us as we close? Okay, please, Japheth, go ahead. Our loving and our gracious Father, which are in heaven, we thank you for this privilege to be here, united with Pastor Daniel Mesa, for the privilege to be witnesses of the truth, Lord. We thank you because in this time of trial, in these last days, you have a people who stand up for the truth. And we know that we are not alone. There are people all around the world who are standing up for the Bible truth. And we pray that you continue to impart your Holy Spirit to each and every one of them. Amen. We pray that you work mightily through us and help us to not stray from the truth, Lord, but to continue faithful to your word and to the testimonies yeah, and to always stand up for the right for truth for duty even if it may cost us our lives mm -hmm. we pray that you be with uh, pastor daniel mason his family and with our family as well and with all of your children throughout the world be with them bless them and prepare us all for the coming of our lord amen. jesus christ this we pray in jesus name amen